chief guest for today, His Excellency, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, who would be joining us any moment now. May I request everybody to kindly join us back inside the hall, be seated, and all mobile phones to be either switched off or put onto silent mode from non-woods. Thank you very much indeed. Once again, a very warm welcome. Hope you all had that refreshing cup of tea and coffee in the morning. It is still being served outside. If you wish to carry your cup of tea and coffee back to the hall, you're most welcome. Once again, we are waiting the arrival of our honorable chief guest who would be here any moment now. Thank you. We've just been informed, our Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, has just left his residence, would be reaching us in another five to seven minutes. Once again, requesting everybody to be seated. All mobile phones either switched off or put onto silent mode from now onwards, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we will go ahead with the proceedings of day two as soon as the Honorable Chief Guest is here with us. Thank you for being cooperative. Kindly be seated. Thank you. Be seated. All our delegates who are outside at the pre function area are kindly requested to take their seats. All mobile phones are either switched off or put onto silent mode. Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand. A very warm welcome to you, Your Excellency. May I request you to kindly grace the stage with your august presence. Warm welcome to you, sir. Joining His Excellency, I would like to invite on the stage Mr. Thomas Bleeker, Netherlands Space Office. A warm welcome to you, sir. Dr. Subarao Pavaluri, President SIA India, and Mr. Anil Prakash, DG SIA India. May I now request everyone to kindly rise for the national anthem. Jai Hind, Jai 
Thank you. Kindly be seated. Namaskar and good morning. Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency, Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh, PVSM, UYSM, AVSM, VSM, retired, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand. Eminent dignitaries on the days, special invitees, senior government officials, distinguished panelists, speakers, and participants, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to this opening session on day two of India Space Congress 2023 on leveraging space to power next-gen communications and businesses, which is being organized by SETCOM Industry Association, CI India, and Indian Space Congress, supported by Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center, Department of Telecommunications, Ministry of Communications, Government of India, Department of Defense Production, Ministry of Defense, Government of India, Niti Aayog, National Institute of Advanced Science Studies, NIAS, Research and Information System for Developing Countries, RIS, India Post and New Space India Limited, and SIL. Ladies and gentlemen, the august presence of eminent dignitaries today is a source of inspiration for all of us. I would now request Dr. Subarao Pavaluri, President SIA India, to kindly do the honors of welcoming our eminent guests with a floral bouquet and a shawl. We welcome our Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency, Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand. And once again, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you very much indeed, Your Excellency, for sparing your valuable time and gracing this occasion. Thank you once again. We also welcome Mr. Thomas Bleeker, Netherlands Space Office. A very warm welcome to you, sir. We are honored to have you amongst us today. Warm welcome. Thank you, Dr. Subarao, for doing the honors. And ladies and gentlemen, as is customary in our country, we begin every auspicious occasion by lighting the ceremonial lamp and invoking the gods and goddesses, seeking their blessings to guide us and bless us for the success of our endeavors. I would now request His Excellency and eminent dignitaries on the days to kindly do the honors of lighting the ceremonial lamp and inaugurating today's proceedings vakratund mahakaya surya koti samaprabha nirvighna kuru me deva sarvakarishu sarvana
for a group photograph and ladies and gentlemen let's put our hands together on the ceremonial opening of day 2 of India Space Congress 2023 by our eminent dignitaries Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Subarao Pavaluri, President of SIA India, is CMD of Anand Technologies Limited. He founded Anand Technologies in 1993, which is the first private industry to set up assembly, integration, and testing facilities for satellite and launch vehicles in India. Dr. Rao is a technologist and an entrepreneur with extensive experience in Indian space program ISRO for over four decades. And I now have the privilege in requesting you, sir, to kindly begin the proceedings with your welcome address. Namaskar and good morning. Lieutenant General Gurmit Singh Ji, PVSM, EVSM, AVSM, VSM retired, His Excellency the Governor of Uttarakhand. Welcome you, sir. Mr. Thomas Mdikar, Head International Relationship, Netherlands Space Office. Welcome you, sir. Uh, Mr. Anil Prakash, ladies and gentlemen, friends from media. It is my great honor to stand before this esteemed gathering as we continue our journey of exploration and innovation in the field of satellite technology. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished speakers for today's sessions. We are privileged to have Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Gurmit Singh Ji, PVSM, UVSM, AVSM, VSM retired, a great warrior. <coughs> His Excellency, the Governor of Uttarakhand, he gracing us, I'm sure, he is going to inspire all of us in the technology side too, with his inaugural address. And he is our esteemed guest today. His presence underscores the importance of space technology in advancing the development of our nation, both in defense and also in civilian areas. We're honored to have Mr. Thomas Bleeker, the head of the international relationship with the Netherlands Space Office, he delivering the keynote address on international efforts for debris mitigation and uh, keeping space sustainable. And also shedding light on the global efforts to ensure a sustainable and debris free space environment in future. Yesterday, inaugural was attended by the His Excellency Sri Bandar Dattatrey Garu, the Governor of Haryana, and a guest of honor being Dr. Somnath, Chairman ISRO, besides other prominent speakers of international repute, and followed by good discussions on utilization of space technology for development of various sectors. I'm sure today also will be benefited by various speakers. Please allow me to elaborate on a few example, uh, examples of a remarkable contribution that Uttarakhand has been made in the field of satellite technology. Uttarakhand, nestled in the lap of Himalayas, is not only renowned for its natural beauty, but also for its adv advancements in leveraging space technology for the betterment of the society. In the name of disaster management, Uttarakhand faces the challenges of natural calamities such as landslides, floods, and earthquakes. That's why we have here a governor, a people's governor, and dealing in various solutions, providing solutions to the Uttarakhand. And with his excellent experience being a disciplined warrior, and he's bringing in laurels to the space tech, to the Uttarakhand. And the, though the utilization of satellite-based remote sensing and geographic information system technologies have been developed advanced and for the very early warning systems, in fact, to predict and monitor these disasters, that's happening in Uttarakhand today. These systems have been instrumental in saving lives and minimizing the impact of such events in our communities, particularly Uttarakhand. For instance, during the devastating floods of 2013, the satellite imagery played a crucial role in assessing the extent of damage and coordinating the rescue and relief efforts in Uttarakhand region. The real-time data provided by satellites helped us to identify the affected areas, assess the impact on infrastructure, and prioritize aid distribution. This enabled us to provide timely assistance to those in need and accelerate the recovery process. And the environmental conservation is another important area for Uttarakhand, 
because since it's made strides with the help of satellite technology. The state is blessed with rich biodiversity and fragile ecosystem, which requires very vigilant monitoring and protection. That's where the satellite technology becomes very relevant for a state like Uttarakhand. And the satellite imagery and data have played a crucial role in monitoring forest cover, identifying encroachments, and implementing effective conservation measures in the state of Uttarakhand. This has helped us protect our previous, our very, very precious flora and fauna, and ensuring a sustainable future for generations to come. For instance, satellite-based monitoring systems have aided in combating illegal mining activities and deforestation, the vigilance eye from satellite. By analyzing satellite imagery, we can detect unauthorized activities and can take prompt action to prevent further damage to our natural resources. This proactive approach has been instrumental in preserving our environment and maintaining the ecological balance of Uttarakhand. In the agriculture sector, which serves as the backbone for Uttarakhand's economy, the satellite-based technologies have transformed farming practices. The farmers now have access to real-time information on soil moisture, weather patterns, and crop health. In fact, empowering them to make informed decisions and enhance their productivity. The satellite base, in fact, completely, the data has revolutionized crop monitoring, water management, and precision agriculture practices. By leveraging this technology, we can optimize resources allocation, minimize the wastage, and ensure sustainable agricultural practices that can contribute to food security and in which Uttarakhand also plays an important role in the country. These examples highlight the remarkable contribution that Uttarakhand has made in harnessing the power of satellite technology for the benefit of its people and the environment. The demand state to Uttarakhand state commitment to leveraging space applications for the betterment of our communities. As you delve into today's sessions, I encourage each and every one of you, particularly youngsters, to actively participate and engage together that explore the frontiers of space technology, exchange ideas, and drive innovation for a better future. Your presence and contributions are vital in shaping the trajectory of our nation's space sector and its impact on society. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all productive and inspiring discussions during the Space Congress 2023. Namaskar and Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for those warm words of welcome and for setting the context for today's discussions. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are indeed honored to have as honorable chief guest, His Excellency, Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh, PVSM, UISM, AVSM, VSM, the Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, who is known for his military deftness and proficiency in the Indian Army, is presently bedecking the designation of the Governor of Uttarakhand. Sri Singh's personality is a combination of bravery, courage, kindness, compassion, simplicity, and honesty. A wonderful amalgamation of simplicity and popularity in his personality, an expert in taking tough decisions in his military career, Sri Singh is broad-minded, soft in spirit, heart, and thoughts. He is the former Deputy Chief of the Army Staff of the Indian Army. He has special attachment with soldiers, warriors, and the martyrs. He was also chief executive patron of the Rashtriya Sainik Sansta. He has been participating in TV media on Nation First Focus on Jai Hind Journal and as a defense expert. He has been awarded the four presidential awards and two commendations by the Chief of Army Staff during his nearly 40 years of service in the Army, Param Vishish Seva Medal, Uttam Yudh Seva Medal, Ati Vishish Seva Medal, and Vishish Seva Medal. He had also served in Banbasa of the Uttarakhand during his tenure in Army. And ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker today, Mr. Thomas Bleeker, is from Netherlands Space Office. The Netherlands Space Office, NSO, is the space agency of the Dutch government. The task of the NSO is to advise and implement the national space policy. 
The Netherlands space policy focuses on the added value of space for science, the economy, and society, and in particular, the development of groundbreaking space technologies and services based on satellite data. The NSO, located in the Hugh, was founded on 1st of January 2009 by the later members of the NSO steering group with the aim of bundling various implementation tasks of Dutch space policy and establishing a single point of contact between the national government with regard to space travel. And we would now like to invite for the keynote address on international efforts for debris mitigation and keeping the space sustainable, Mr. Thomas Bleeker. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome our keynote speaker. Madam Chair, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues all over the place, very good morning from my side. Please allow me to thank first the organization of this Congress for the choice of this topic, levering space to power next generation communications and business. In space, a next generation can be tomorrow or can be next week. Space developments are going really fast. Therefore, we must step up efforts to work together to keep the space sustainable. I was honored to attend last week G20 Space Economy Leaders Meeting in Bengaluru. Also at that meeting, special attention was given to space debris. I take the liberty to recall a short section from the closing statement. I quote, leaders, the G20 leaders, Leaders also recommended the efforts to move towards a more sustainable manufacturing of space systems and progressive use of eco-friendly and green propulsion systems, end quote. So also at that meeting, lots of attention was given to space debris and the sustainability. These days, space debris and sustainability in general are hot topics. We see that at this meeting, the G20 last week, and also at many, many other meetings, congresses, discussions all over, all over the world. Also in my country, the Netherlands, space debris mitigation is a high priority. I'd like to take the, this opportunity to highlight a few developments in the Netherlands and also to look ahead. Whether on Earth or in outer space, the Netherlands is committed to the international rule of law. Hence, the Netherlands is signatory to all five United Nations treaties related to outer space. And accordingly, the Netherlands has established the Dutch Space Act. The number of space activities in the Netherlands is growing, like everywhere, resulting in an increase of the number of Dutch space operators and satellites under Dutch jurisdiction and control. This year, 22 Dutch satellites operate on the Dutch space law, 10 geostationary satellites and 12 low uh, Earth orbit satellites. These numbers of satellites under Dutch jurisdiction will increase significantly in the coming years, also like everywhere else. In the light of this and the general trend, the Netherlands is particularly committed to a safe, secure and sustainable outer space environment. The Netherlands has therefore made an analysis of how the 21 LTS, the long-term sustainability of outer space activities, the 21 LTS guidelines fit in our existing regulations and how our current space act could be adapted accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, our economies, societies and security depends more than ever on space infrastructure and yet our current regime of space traffic management and space debris is inadequate and unsustainable. Activities in space go so fast, space constellations grow day by day. Space debris is a straightforward threat to this space infrastructure. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but possibly very soon. I'm convinced that this international community must consider to strive towards new instruments, maybe even legally binding instruments, preferably within the framework of the United Nations. 
we need a governance while providing a global level playing field. A leave no debris approach leading to a circular economy in space would be an example. Moreover, in developing strategies and adequate regulatory frameworks, we need to include private and public stakeholders. Not only because the space sector is a global market, but also because technologies advance rapidly, implicating that we should adopt a technology open approach as much as possible, together, public and private. A few years ago, the OECD published a report on space sustainability called The Economics of Space Debris in Perspective. The increasing space activities gave insights about the economic of space debris. It also gave insights on the influence of the possibility to insure satellites and the influence this insurance system has on space debris. It is, if it is really easy or cheap to insure the loss of satellites, you do not care anymore about one or two satellites. You just insure a few more. This means there is no financial incentive to be careful with our common space environment. I can recommend this OECD report. I think it's from 2018 or 19. Ladies and gentlemen, staring up the night sky has given us astonishing insight and knowledge. But perhaps the most valued benefit of outer space activities is its contribution to a sustainable development on Earth. We need information from satellites about climate change. We need information about our changing world for disaster warnings for agriculture. Too much space debris might harm our precious satellites and precious information. As space is now an indispensable part of our daily lives, the global community needs clear rules and a forum where dialogue is possible to develop a global consensus and, a, and a, to fight space debris. I believe Copius and, and the United Nations Outer Office Space Affairs in Vienna could continue a role in this context or in any other forum we can discuss, like the G20 last, year, last week. But we must go forward and we must mitigate space debris. We have to work together in all kinds of issues and solutions. For example, we could agree on a life cycle of space operations, including a launch phase in orbit operations of spacecraft and the end of life deorbit of operations. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no option to wait. We have to go forward joint, jointly, international and together with the private sector. We have to, the inspiration to do that. Let's not wait. Let's take the necessary steps and let's go forward towards a joint future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, I now have the proud privilege in inviting His Excellency to kindly share his words of wisdom and encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, let's once again put our hands together to welcome His Excellency for the opening address. Jai Hind and Namaskar. It's a matter of pleasure and honor for me to be here for India Space Congress, such a beautiful gathering with a specific aim. When I look at this word space from Punjabi and Indian innocence, I straightway look at this three letters last, 
ACE, ACE. I feel in this space is hidden the ACE aspect of our entire humanity. All solutions can be built up from here. And when I look at the four letters, the pace in the space, I think India has not picked up the pace to exploit the space for the humanity in the coming times. Today's theme, so beautifully crafted, re-imaging space for socio-economic development. In fact, uh, I am uh, really enchanted by what Dr. Sarabhai said. He said that he was convinced and envisioned that resources in space have the potential to address the real problem of man and society. I think that actually gives us a lead to understand that how to look at space. I think the moment has arrived when artificial intelligence, space and cyber are really going to pave the way for the solutions that we've been looking for so far. It has been so thrilling that the last visit of Honorable Prime Minister of the US and both the top leaders, they affirmed that technology will play the defining role in deepening our partnership. And uh, they also hailed the inauguration of initiative in critical and emerging technology, which was held in January 2023 as a major milestone in our relationship. They indeed applauded our growing cooperation on earth and space science and space technology. In fact, uh, I would say that the current moment is the critical point. This prestigious event is going to be a milestone in how India looks at the space in development of our space programs. This, uh, I think the effort today also highlights, would highlight our achievement, outstanding achievements that we've had in the space exploration, space technology, and scientific excellence. I think it's a great opportunity for each one of us out here to exchange knowledge, create collaboration, spark new ideas, and define the future in the exploration. One thing is definite in India's moment at this juncture, there's a paradigm change. The transformation, modernization, and the entire perspective at the technology is undergoing a change. I find it very interesting that the government of India had unleashed reforms in the space domain in 2022, in 2020. And the India space policy 2023 has actually taken the path that we were looking since very long. The vision of the India's space policy is absolutely clear to augment the space capabilities. And the strategies that it is adopting is to pursue a holistic approach by encouraging and promoting greater private sector participation in the entire value chain of the space economy. I remember I had gone to Hyderabad to Anand Technology, Dr. Subarao's center of R&D. I was so impressed with the precision and the perfection in his endeavor in this arena. And I'm different about it, that now the time has come where artificial intelligence, space and the cyber is going into a, get into an absolutely a different mold to deliver results and solution to us. I must share with you, Honorable Prime Minister, he visited Uttarakhand recently, and he said, 21st century, the third decade, 
belongs to Uttarakhand. So I was wondering how to make this divine statement into actuality. I'm very happy that Dr. Subaru laid down what Uttarakhand can relate to the space technology. Himalayas, divinity, spirituality, clear skies. And I must share with you, in Nainital, we have uh, Aries, which is the observational center to look into the space. And we've got very large number of astro clubs also to look into the space. And to add divinity into our efforts into the space, we are creating a astro dham. We are adding the divinity to the aspect of space. At times I feel India's civilizational and cultural linkage to the space and the cosmos has been unique. I must share with you, when I was a major, I was attending a, Sam, I was attending a training program in Indian Institute of Mass Communication. We had a German uh, a gentleman from the Germany, a professor. He came and he was telling us about the cosmos. And he divided the cosmos into A, B, C, D, D1, D2, D3. But there was no mention of India in the entire distribution. So it was quite uh, uh, intriguing for us because we have related to the cosmos right from the time immemorial. The first word that we pronounce in the morning as Om, the vibration which the Om creates and are connect to the cosmos and space is divine and deep. I personally feel the time has come now where the civilizational dividend and the technology realities have got to combine to take us into a higher space in the space technology. I'm very happy that the strategy that nation has adopted now is to focus on R&D, provide public goods and services using space technology for national priorities, and to create a stable and predictable regulatory framework. Also, very interestingly, because when I have been looking at the national, uh, our private players in the entire game of technology, especially from the space. Now is the time when uh, I think the government has decided to assist the private players from end-to-end -end activities in the space sector in a big way. I think the whole scenario is changing. One thing is definite, that the space technology holds the key to unlock the brighter and more sustainable future for us. India has always and now, I think it has dared to dream to score the higher benchmark as far as the space is concerned. I think space can provide us Space technology can provide us new opportunity to transform the society. I also, beyond the realms of the rhetoric, I personally feel if you want to really achieve the status of wish guru or the status of a developed state or what we aim for 2047, then this can be done through the space technology. I think this is one understanding, one realization that each one of us in leadership has understood. Another aspect is how to use space for socioeconomic development. I personally feel the arena of socioeconomic development through the space technology is unrestricted, unlimited. Only thing is required is how do we walk across our self-doubt? I think that's the only thing which is required. It actually, I would say that the current moment 
we are witnessing a paradigm shift, a change, an evolution. I think it is the responsibility of each one of us that we harness the potentials of the space. The spirit of creativity and exploration, I think, is what is most important. One thing is definite that uh, our space program is most vibrant and successful in the world. In the arena of mini, micro, reusable, the way we brought down the cost, I think the way we've broken many barriers, I think that is what actually impulses us to see that the space technology has got a great future for us. One is deeply proud of ISRO, its incredible achievements, accomplishments. We do remember the first lunar mission, Chandrayaan, Mangalyaan, the Mars Orbiter mission, first attempt and the first reach. Fourteen July is not very far away. It's just around the corner, around the turn. And these are going to be the turning moments for the nation. In fact, the last attempt was one of the most humbling attempt. But it has brought in many lessons. It has brought us into the area of re-dedication. And I'm definite about it that Chandrayaan 3 is bound to be a success based on the dedication and the commitment of our scientific community. You know, when I look at this letter 3, Chandrayaan, to me, 3 gives the look of Shivji's blessing in the form of a Trishul. And I'm definite, my prayers to Almighty to help us in our aspiration. Today I'm feeling very thrilled. We got so many Air Force officers who are attending this, uh, this seminar. In fact, uh, when I look at this word air, I have been part of the armed forces for almost 40 years. When I look at the air, sometimes I get compelled to look at only the AI part of the air. <laughs> Artificial intelligence. But now your gaze at the space is what thrills me. Such a beautiful participation by Air Force here in the seminar. My deepest compliment to you. I'm proud of each one of you. Your quest for scientific innovation and excellence in the realms of space exploration, I can see it's a house full. On a topic like this, house full out here, I think thrills me. I think the time has come now to really Hindi may ek word bolte hain, sankoj, hesitation. I think now the time has come that we are across that self-doubt and we must understand our self-worth. That is what is more important. The space-based technology, I am definite about it, that it is going to empower us into socio-economic development in all perspectives. I think it is just left to the imagination where all you can use it. I'm so happy that Dr. Subaro has, if you and look at his name, Dr. Subaro, uh, the full name, Pavu Luri, there are three U, only one I. He's always looking about the other people around. I think, I personally feel space technology can bring in a revolution, an untapped revolution in the wide range of industries. Only thing it is limited to is your limit of thinking and utilization. Telecommunication, navigation, weather forecasting, disaster management, you name it, and it can be utilized there. I think it can be, be a big 
assistance in the dependable and inexpensive internet connectivity. Terrestrial internet assist can be provided by this. In fact, one thing is definite. If we have to lead in the 21st century, then that can only be through technology. And honestly, I'm convinced about it that artificial intelligence, cyber, and mainly the space is one which can really give us that space to convert our dreams into our results. I think it definitely gives that potential to take out the leverage out of this technology. Satellite-based communication system is something which can revolutionize the entire perspective. When I go deeper, I feel that it can increase the educational possibilities. It has already done wonders in the past in training teachers and the scientists in the country. It can improve our healthcare services. It can facilitate the e-commerce. It can really bring in sustainable development. One word movement to the world which uh, our Honorable Prime Minister has said, L-I-F-E, -E, life, lifestyle for environment. I think we've got to take it as a campaign forward. As a governor, when I look at Uttarakhand, I personally feel whatever the challenge may be, but more important is the solution. And in solution, I look at technology, and within technology, I look at the space as the solution provider. I must share with you that we recently made a very laudable and uh, did a lot of research and Uttarakhand Investment and Infrastructure Development Board has been made so that there's an ease of business. It's a single window handling and it facilitates the space technology to come in. We're also having a seminar, uh, not a seminar, a summit for investment in December. I would welcome each one of you. I don't know how many out of you have been to Uttarakhand, but if you want to taste divinity, if you want to taste spirituality, if you want to really feel the beauty of the blessings of Lord Shiva, do come there. You'll be in a different vibration of divine and spiritual thinking. I must share with you, we had uh, three gentlemen from Peace and Conflict uh, forums from Norway who came, they stayed in Hardwar. After three days of staying there, they came to me. Uh, they came to me as a governor. So first thing I asked, how was it last three days? You know what they said? They said, sir, we slept beautifully. We slept so nice last three days. Because there's a serenity, there's a divinity, there's a spirituality. Today, uh, I personally feel, especially after the pandemic, COVID pandemic, if you want to really enjoy the nature, you want to enjoy the Himalayas, you want to enjoy the holy Ganges, please visit. And a person dealing with the space technology exploration, and I think you are, from our point of view, I would say, Atiti Devo Bhava. That means, such guests will, we will look as if God has come to us. I welcome each one of you to visit uh, Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand has got a unique advantage for space research and exploration. And I'm so happy that Dr. Subarao brought it out so beautifully, so touchingly for me. We are looking for many uh, solutions, and I think uh, one is looking at space technology from that solution dynamics point of view. I also must share with you that uh, in Dehradun, we have Indian Institute of Remote Sensing. So it's a very deep embedment of 
this art which is there. We also have Center for Space, Science and Technology Education in Asia and Pacific. Honestly, the desire is to create cutting edge space research center in our places. Once again, I would invite every one of you, every scientist, engineer, every innovator, everyone who is in the game of startup and the company to visit us in Uttarakhand. I think what is thrilling of India at this moment is our satellite launches, our lunar mission, dream and resolve, satellite application, space technology, innovation, startups, companies, and uh, it is contributing into our self-reliance, Atam Nirbhar. And I'm different about it. The space technology is going to play a major role in our walk toward 2047. And our missions are absolutely clear in this aspect. I think, to me, the next step, next focus, next concentration that one is looking as a leader is our investment in R&D. To be honest, when I visited Dr. Subarao's R&D center, I think I, I felt so happy that we are now again focusing on the R&D. We have to walk into manufacturing and supply chain. I think the COVID pandemic, that ecosystem, that environment, that moment has told us the lesson that we learned on, for us to be focusing on manufacturing and supply chain, and also through the manufacturing to grow our capacities. Most important is the human resource. We have to create competent workforce. I'm very thrilled when I go and interact with the young students. I find that space has become one topic where they want to put their future into. One is looking at the space-based assets. And most importantly, what we are doing today, we are looking at the collaboration in this arena. I think this is also the moment that uh, I would like to remember Reverently remember our visionary leadership, which has brought us to this day when we can really deliver as far as space exploration technology is concerned. Dr. Homi Baba, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. I think they are the nodalities which has brought us into these arenas. In fact, uh, I remember October 11, 2021, Honorable Prime Minister, when he launched the Indian Space Association as a single window agency for facilitating space sector opportunities for Indian startup and the private sector. I think the uh, one feels very happy when one looks at the, li the list of the Indian Space Association, their membership, and we are looking at you in integrating the entire perspective. In fact, uh, to me, it is very thrilling the way we have brought down the cost factor. We have hiked up the technology and we are going into the new ventures of micro, mini, nano satellites, and also looking at uh, the future of air breathing propulsion and other arenas. In the end, I feel very touched when Dr. Subara 
He looked at Uttarakhand from the point of view of space technology. I'm indeed deeply touched because I feel space technology and its application can provide us multitude arena of solutions that we are looking at. I once again invite each one of you. I can see the way you are listening that I think the future of space technology in India is too bright and it is going to contribute in a very big way in our path to 2047 where we have taken a resolve of being the Viksit Rashtra, Atam Nirbhar Rashtra, Sarvashesh Rashtra, and Vishwaguru. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Thank you very much indeed, Your Excellency, for that insightful opening address, your words of inspiration. And we wholeheartedly thank you for that warm invitation you've extended to all of us present here to your state, Uttarakhand. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank His Excellency for that invitation. Let's put our hands together for that. I would now request Dr. Subarao Pavaluri to kindly do the honors of presenting a token of gratitude to our eminent guest here. We present to His Excellency a small token of appreciation and gratitude. We are indeed grateful to you, Your Excellency, for sparing your time and being here with us. Thank you once again. We present a small token of gratitude to Mr. Thomas Bleeker from Netherlands Space Office. Thank you, Mr. Bleeker, for that wonderful address we had from you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Dr. Subarao, for doing the honors. May I now invite Sri Anil Prakash, Director General SIA India, to kindly close the proceedings of the inaugural session with proposing the vote of thanks. Wow. What a unprecedented speech. I think this title has almost fulfilled. His Excellency, Governor of Uttarakhand, we said reimagining the space for societal benefit. And he has energized the entire gathering here with a commitment and looking forward march that where India is going to excel and also collaborate like-minded people in the world. Thank you, sir. Thank you, His Excellency, for your uh, very encouraging word to us. And it is, it is a lot for us as an industry association. And in the helms of uh, Dr. Subara Pavluri, being a president of the association, we will serve, we'll honor and commit ourselves for the benefit of, and we'll see that Uttarakhand, we will do much more our uh, uh, involvement with Uttarakhand in the space area. Thank you very much, sir. I'm really thankful to Thomas Bleeker and who has uh, honored us coming all the way from Norway uh, to come here, uh, Finland, sorry, and then uh, to come uh, Netherlands and uh, to come here and bless us uh, with this uh, uh, very inciting address on the uh, uh, debris mitigation because that is going to be concerned to each one of us because as we are going, there is millions of debris floating around and their speed is on lightning speeds, and this is, uh, this is the no technology can to our, I think we have to sit together, collaborate together, uh, how we can resolve this uh, debris uh, mitigation. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thomas Bleeker, for your measure. Yesterday we have a resounding day where we have heard uh, His Excellency Governor of, of uh, Haryana and a very, uh, uh, you can say, dynamic and uh, what do you, I ha don't have an exact word for uh, Mr. Somnath, who has spent almost, sir, for about four or five hours with us. And he interacted with each one of them personally and interacted with media. And he told 
minute details about how Chandrayaan will take place, how the, their engineer scientists are working for it, and how they are taking access measure not to make this sound. And he analyzed and gave, and everybody is thrilled. And the entire uh, media community has uh, publicized this yesterday. All the newspapers are filled with that. Sir, we are also very honored. Uh, we have an Indian origin uh, lady, uh, Arti Hola Mani. She is the director of UNOSO, United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. So we are very proud. Let's give a big hand to Arti Hola Mani. She is really proud, very proud, all of us, and especially proud to the Indian. Uh, she's, uh, she's taking charge of the office very shortly. And sir, uh, we are very honored to have uh, 30 nationality participating in this three days collaboration. And we have about 170 speakers coming from all the way from forum to attend this. And we have 35 sessions. And it is puzzling and confusing lots of us or the audience which session they should go and we should not miss. So this is, I'm very sorry for that, but this is the way we have to deal with it. Thank you very much for your patience. And uh, thanks again for His Excellency for your time. And uh, we look forward to a, a deliberation for the day. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much indeed, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, we just honored Ms. Arti Hola. That reminds me, the next session coming up is a women-led session where we will be having the topic of breaking barriers, inspiring futures, women in space. But before that, we close this session. May I once again request everybody to kindly rise as a mark of respect for the great nation for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Utchala Jaladhita Ranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Mage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagana Mangana Dayaka Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we now close the proceedings of the opening session. Once again, thanking His Excellency for kindly sparing his most valuable time for that inspirational address. And once again, we thank His Excellency for the invitation he extended to all of us to visit the state of Uttarakhand. I would request everybody to kindly remain in their seats while His Excellency leaves the venue as we are straight away moving ahead towards our next session. In this hall, we will be conducting the session on breaking barriers, inspiring futures, women in space. In Regency Ballroom 1, the session will be on satellites for SDGs, track 2. Track 3, Regency Ballroom 2, on optical links for satellite communications. And track 4 will be conducted in Regency Ballroom 3 on OSAM, transforming space operations and explorations. Kindly proceed towards the tracks you wish to attend. All those who wish to attend the track here are requested to kindly remain seated. I would request the exit passages to be left clear for His Excellency to depart. Thank you. <laughs>